Good afternoon. Doing a little bit of my stitchy book thing that I've decided to do. Um, this is how I finished off the first page. I think did I show you this? I can't remember. Um, yeah, I just did a simple border, and I'm leaving that now. Um, yeah, I quite like just it was just fun practicing the stitches really. So these I'm going to put onto. Uh, fabric eventually and stitch them on but at the moment they're just on post-it notes so I don't forget so this is the next page I'm going to do now I don't know if you remember it was a gel print where's the other bit Hold on. it was a gel print I did onto interfacing basically so yeah I've just chosen which bits I want to do and cut it out and pinned it on it's got a layer of batting because i want a slightly quilted look if it'll quilt actually i'm not i'm i don't know because it's not very spongy so and then uh the page bit and that's that really so i'm just going to do some quite basic stitching on this one i think because what i'm thinking is is to outline in like a running stitch yeah and then again outline the circle here and then maybe do some sort of stitch in there and do the same here um i don't know and then just play around some other stitches there basically so you know i haven't really planned it i'll just wing it so um i'll choose the thread color i i want to show you this actually um i went to ikea i don't know if you can see this in its entirety um, and they got this new box which is a double layer um it's got you just fasten it there basically it all comes flat packed um but yeah the beauty of it is i can get all of my dmc threads in this one box Ta -da! so yeah it's pretty cool i like it i like it a lot so while i've got it open let's choose a color and get the lid out of the way I'm thinking of going with one of these oranges actually i don't know why i could go yellow to really make it show up or i could go the variegated blue i've got my daylight lamp on here so i'm hoping it's brightened it right up actually good way to get my steph francis threads out i could do that i don't know <laughs> Should have thought about this before you turn the camera on. I've got to put these back. I was doing some stitching downstairs. So yeah, if you go to IKEA and you've got these threads, this is quite a handy little box to keep it all in. Um let me grab my Steph Francis ones in case there is a perfect one. But you see that's just perfect. I was very happy when I found that. <laughs> but it's one of their newer designs that's just out, so you might have to hunt around for it. I don't know how up to date your Ikea is so I'm just grabbing my Steph Francis threads in their lovely box which I made with you. I bought my needle book over just in case I need it. Can you see the perfect colour? Can you even see? I'm not even showing you. Yeah, there you go. See, that's see the line's quite good that one will be better because it's thinner that is I don't know actually that might be absolutely it might be quite interesting that one they're really thick ones they're almost like braids that'll show up this is a rayon I think that'll disappear oops, oops occurring have you got caught on there I think I'm gonna go with that one right let's do it even though they're wound onto bobbins, they still get in a mess. I still don't know how that happens. But, c'est la vie. 
Right, anyway, I hope you're all having a good week. It's, what is it, Thursday today. I've been walked for miles by my daughter already, so I'm well exercised, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. I think what else I've been up to working all week. I mean, well, two days rather, not all week at all. Um, you're too long. Uh, yeah, that's about as exciting as my week has been. Actually, it's just like well, it's life, isn't it? Life, life, life. Let's try you. You've got a nice big hole. Right. Oh, um, Susan sent me a photograph of some kind of like ad hoc stitching that she's doing and she's given me permission to share it. So um, I'll put it at the end of the video. And um, yeah, if you've got any bits of work that you'd like to share that you want to put out there, just let me you know, just send it to me in an email and I'll pop it on my next stitchy video. You know, these ones where I'm doing my weird and wonderful pieces and um yeah let everybody have a look and see what you've been up to that'll be um that'll be great so i'll say i'll put it i think i'll only be able to get it at the end of the video i have not really mastered <laughs> um video editing yet so yeah <laughs> we're getting there i have learned how to do the um time lapse that was something when i was doing the rooms move around so that was that was a bonus otherwise that would have been really boring um but i couldn't slow it down because it was incredibly fast i think it was like 30 seconds for every 30 minutes or something so um yeah it was really fast right this is really thick and i've got a very rusty nail by the looks uh needle where on earth have you been Okay, let's get a fresh one because that is not happy at all going through that fabric. Look after your needles, guys. And look after your needles. Let's get a fresh one. Let's try. Let's try you. It's a John James Chenille size 26. Let's see if you're any good. Something with a point would be good right at this moment. Are you going to come out or are you just going to stay in the packet? Thank you. Yeah, so. That's it, really. <laughs> we, um, when I went out with my daughter, she had... I was surprised she asked me to come actually because it's um, still Easter holidays here for the kids and of course um, that means she's got Eleanor home and um, but when she got all the dogs in the car she had like seven dogs and of course legally you're only allowed to walk six on your own so I thought ah that's why you needed another adult then <laughs> so um, yeah so but it was good we, we went to the forest and um, oh we got so lost <laughs> covered in brambles by the time we came out the dogs thought it was wonderful they had a whale of a time so um one fell in the blooming river oh and it always has to be the pristine white fluffy one doesn't it you know and it was it was willow and um yeah she sort of she looked a bit panicked actually and i thought she was going to run off but she was all right she came out she's a bichon cross with something or other but um yeah we we don't take into account their special needs. <laughs> we just walk them wherever. But they're dogs at the end of the day. And if you raise them as dogs, they, they usually like a, a good rummage in the forest. So, um, yeah, we got a little bit lost, but never mind. Right, I'm going to have to do this the hard way. This is rather thick. I was worried about this. Um, not worried, but this is quite a thick um, woven interfacing. So... So you lucky little sausages get to see me outline all these. What I might do is put you on time lapse because it's going to be 
as you can see it's going to be a while that way I haven't got a waffle on in your ear too much I noticed in my last video every time I raised my hand up to pull the stitches through it was putting the camera out of focus so I'm going to try and stop doing that Actually, before I put you on time lapse, I, I can't remember if I've shown these, so I'm just going to show them. And if I have, I'm sorry. Um, the Christmas Roxy book, um, it ended up like this. I stitched them back to back. So it's all done now. And it's really nice because you can easily, you know, flip through. So it's just eyelets, pelmet violin at the back between each layer. And um, yeah, just back to back. And then I put the solid bit on the back there so that it will stand up as a book on the bookshelf. I chose that as the front cover because that was the more awkward one to back to back with something. So that's that one. And I apologise if I have shown you this already, but anyway. And the um, Sew for the Soul. So I did a scrappy cover for it. So that's the cover. And then it's... Um, I didn't sew... I didn't sew each individual page in. I've just left it as a loose spine so that you can, you know, properly flick through. And I just pinned on or pinned or sewed on the little doodads, whatever you want to call them, little title page things. So, yeah, so that's that. Oh, cat hair, of course. Um yeah oh and lynn thank you for reminding me what this was it um the prompt was to put bits of fabric of all the fabrics that we used in the book thank you because i had forgotten obviously so yeah so that's that they're both done now so they're both sat on the shelf so that's lovely and then i did i tell you that yeah free motion the so for the soul 2020 lockdown because that's when we did it so that's a nice momentum for an awful time in the world, wasn't it? Right, um, I'm going to put you on time lapse, get this stitched around, just outline the shapes, and then we'll come in and do some embroidery stitches. I hope that's okay. I can't think there's anything else I need to tell you in real time. Um, I'll say I'll stop it at the um, when I've got all those bits done, and we'll do the other stitches together. Because you're just lucky like that. Right, okay, I'll put it on a bit of fast forward. I don't know how much you saw on the time lapse, but it took a while. Crikey. I don't know if you saw, I was having trouble with this one. It kept um, curling. So I switched to this Guterman. I don't know what it's called. Hollow Shimmer. Guterman Sulky Hollow Shimmer. You can barely see it. It's around the outside there. It shimmers, obviously, you know, duh. Um, yeah, so that's around the outside there. And this one I switched to one of my um, Anchor Alcazar threads. Um, these are super shiny. They're lovely. Again, you can just about see it, but that's fine. Because what I intend to do, if I can get this to stay where it's supposed to go, um, is, um, yeah, so that's that one there. And inside and outside. And then this one here, I used a Guterman... I don't know, it's one of their metallics, obviously. Um, yeah, so, and that's stitched quite well, actually. Uh, again, this is all about me experimenting with what I've got, you know. I've never stitched with any of those by hand. I've used them in the machine, and this one, the machine absolutely hates it. So if I use this one, it has to go in the bobbin, and you have to stitch upside down, which 
you know, it's a whole new thing, basically. Um, and these, they're not too bad. This one stretches like mad. So you do have to have, uh, for your machine, you have to have this specific uh, metallic um, sewing machine needle, which has got a really long eye so that it doesn't snap the thread a lot. And the same with this one, it has to have it. And that's another Gutemann Sulky. So, um, yeah, so I just played around with those, really. I don't know if you saw me swapping them over. You might have done. Um, I'll check and see how it's filmed, basically. So, it's all down. Um, yeah, so all the bits are on. So now I've got the choice. If I want to, what I could do is um, kind of do this Pekingese stitch around and pick up, pick up the... Um, I don't know if you can see it. Pick up the stitches. Uh, I can see them because obviously the light shines. But I could get the, the needle under there and pick up and, you know, go round. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's what I did. You saw that. Hope it wasn't too fast. I do think it is, but I, say I can't find on my phone how I slow it down. Slow the time lapse down to sort of maybe one and a half times. I don't know. I don't know what speed it's on. <laughs> it's just what's set. So, um, yeah, that was a real pain, which is a shame. I really wanted to do all of them with that. Um, but, you know, there it was. It, I couldn't do it. I pulled you in, so I'm hoping that I'm not going to go out of frame. Um, so now I just need to decide what I fancied doing in the middle. I'm thinking white, but I'm not sure that's going to be the right colour. No, I don't think it is. Um, what I fancied doing was some giant pistol stitches. That's not right. It's not going to show up. I've got this more chunkier. I don't know what weight this one is. Anyway, I've got this one. It's all a bit blah, isn't it? I'm not sort of very happy with any of those colours really. I didn't realise when I bought this one, it's exactly the same as the one on the scheme. I don't know if you noticed that when I showed you it. <laughs> but I thought, oh, I really like that colour and that's why. So I've got a variegated yellow, that might look quite nice actually. <coughs> or see I was contemplating one of these um, I can't remember what they're called Altin Basak anyway those things might be quite nice actually with the gold see I don't want pink and I don't want purple lilac no they're not right right let's put you back let's try the gold I'll keep you on real time now because that might have done your head in doing, <laughs> doing it that fast. I'll have a look. If it is crazy, then I won't put the time lapse bit in and you'll just jump to this bit next. So I don't know if you also noticed, I got cramp in my hand. It really hurt. <laughs> I need to get my thimble. I don't know where it is actually. And I really need to sort out the lighting in this corner because it's really, really bad. I've got a ring light and a daylight bulb on and it's just not, it's not cutting the mustard. I can't see me blooming threads. Sorry, I'm trying to thread my needle out of the really bright lights. Which it doesn't want to do. Gotcha. Trying to get the metallic and the thread uh, together. Right. Yeah, so I thought just huge pistol stitches. And I don't know, maybe some other stitches inside there. I don't know. I just don't know. Four wraps and see what we end up with. It's 
pulling the batting through, which is not good. Just going to go quite random with these and then uh, maybe fill in with some smaller ones. I really must get on and do my Roxy's um, stitching. <sighs> so much to do. I still haven't done all that listing on Etsy. I'm hopeless, I know. I rang my brother earlier because... Um, he lives in the Midlands and there's something I'm after, which is up in the North Yorkshire Moors. And I said to him, do you get up there uh, often? And he said, uh, yeah. He said, at least once a week. I went, right. I said, message this lady on Facebook and see if she'll, um, see if she'll agree for you to pick it up for me. So, uh, it's a machine. If I get it, I'll show you. Don't worry. But it's a machine that, um, I don't know. I think she's got the ump with me because I was like, I'll arrange a courier to come and pick it up. All you got to do is put it in a box. Never heard a thing. <laughs> so I thought, oh dear. So she's obviously not impressed. Right. Okay. Quite like that. Quite like that indeed. Yeah. So I said to him, you know, we haven't got the same surname. I said, so you message her. And see if she'll um, allow you to come pick it out. So if I get it, I'll be very excited. And I will definitely show you. But I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. <laughs> Keep you on suspensions. Right. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm sort of thinking about different colour blues in there now. Let's have a look. It'll start darker and uh, work its way up. I think I might need to get a bigger shimmy or needle. Do three wraps on this one, see what that looks like. Am I staying in screen? Yeah. I've been practicing drawing. I know, don't fall off your chairs. Because, you know. I can't draw for toffee, but I had forgotten I'd subscribed to this lady, and I can't remember her blooming name now. Is it Michelle at the Creative Creative Cove? And she is the most amazing watercolour artist, but she also does little, what she call them? I can't remember what she calls them, but basically it's sort of sketching. And um, she breaks it down into sort of, you know, chunks that even I can understand. So, you know, uh, fairly simple, basically. And, um, yeah, I've been drawing mushrooms and flowers because she does all that. She does mostly botanicals. So if you're after, I think she said the last one I watched, she said if you're after 
faces and things like that so you definitely come to the wrong channel because she doesn't do that but this oh the way she breaks it down it just makes it so easy so i treated myself to some of the uniball pens they were they weren't expensive they were only about um, i can't remember <laughs> um i don't know they were on amazon because uh, she uses ink uh, liquid ink ones and that's what the uniballs are um so yeah i'm gonna actually um sit and do some sketching tonight so uh quite enjoy doing it actually it's good fun as i say the way she breaks it down um makes it even for a numpty like me to i can do it so yeah you might want to go and check her out i'll put a link down below for her um because she is very very good i'm gonna end that one there and get the next color off because if you know if i can learn to draw by watching her then believe me anyone can but she is right though it is all about breaking down the shapes and yeah so as i say she's a very good teacher she does draw quite fast which is my only frustration with it but what i use is the um, little gear thing in the corner and just slow her down to half speed i think it is So that you know i can keep up basically <laughs> oh because i am artistic oh god where's this i i am artistically challenged most of the time so where are you there you are i have to give in and go for a bigger needle <laughs> i'm gonna have to give in i can't see the blooming thing Are you what did I have for 26? Wasn't it? Let's go for 24, slightly bigger. Don't think I've been in these yet. No, and the numbers are just the size of the eye, basically. That's all that is. Yeah, I really uh, need to sort out the lighting, I think. The lighting in here in the morning is great because the sun rises over here and goes round to the front and by the other room that I used to be in. Um, and that's why I always used to get... Um, go in uh, really good light in the afternoons in there to do this sort of stuff. It was perfect. But um, of course now, this time of day, because it's the afternoon, I don't know what time it is, but it is the afternoon um it's it's in shade basically but then that'll be nice in the summer because the other problem with the other room was i used to sit there and absolutely sorted the buckets because it was rather warm and you used to get all the noise from the dog groomer because she is at the front of the houses basically with her little shed thing so that's why you could hear them quite loudly most of the time, little darlings. So, I'm in my scruffiest clothes because dog walking. Thank goodness I did because I stepped in a great big deep puddle in the middle of the forest and started to sink. It was a bog. So, yeah. And then the dogs ran through it and splashed me and oh, oh. <laughs> you know what it's like if you've got a dog you know what it's like living with a dog <sighs> love them i'm seriously thinking about getting one i must admit but i don't know i've had dogs all my life and uh Yeah, it's quite nice to be free, but then I've got the cat, so I mean, it's you know, you're not really free, <laughs> but uh, yeah, right. I like that, I'm happy with that. Oh, Eastern screen, oh my god, yes, we are. Um, I might leave it there for this video actually and carry on with another one and then, um, you yeah, know, spread these out a little bit. So, these ones I, I really think I'm going to wrap because that'll really bring out the um, outline 
and the same with this one as well so what i'll do is i'll go through my sewing money um embroidery book and see if there's any other because i say there is the <clears throat> what's it called Pekingese stitch but you can just do a woven running stitch as well which is what i've got here so maybe that might be good but i'll go through my little book and see what we've got so um yeah i'm gonna leave it there for now guys uh as i say i'm not gonna rush these these are you know very experimental i enjoyed playing with those so now i know they stitch really nicely the big must well not mistake the big problem with this is is that it's like going through card and then of course i've got the batting on the back so yeah it's given me quite a sore hand so I will, um, I was going to say, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, we'll do the wrapping. I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> we'll do the rest of it another time, basically. <laughs> Good great woman. Um, yeah, you were a right pain to stitch with, you were. I don't know if you noticed, it kept curling, which was very very frustrating i know martha you're looking for that same die as i am that cuts the um the really nice bobbins for your threads and things i'm gonna put you in there because i haven't got one of you and that's the one that i use for um the roxy thing anyway i'm blathering on i will leave you in peace let me give you a close-up of what i've done here so i don't know if you let me just see if i can get it to can you see the shine i don't think you can anyway it's a really nice shiny metallic thing um and then you've got the blue yeah i definitely need to sort out the lighting and then you've got the other shiny one down there you can see that one yeah so they'll hopefully they will show up why isn't that showing when i um go around the edges and things so yeah i'll leave it there uh, i'll put a picture up now uh well when i finish blathering uh of susan's work it's beautiful thank you very much for giving me permission to share it susan uh, and like i said if you've got anything that you want to share with anybody um just pop it to me and i will pop it on here and we can all go ooh, pretties all together all right so yeah and as i say if you're after a box for your threads here go to ikea look at that it's amazing i used to have them in a great big box so this is like so compact and bijou it's lovely <laughs> right uh yep yeah, so susan's picture's coming up we'll finish this another time and i'll see you then bye